So Ghana was literally one of the best trips I've ever taken in my entire life. Literally, I had fun from the moment I landed until the time I left. I didn't even feel like leaving. And I just felt so at peace in Ghana. Um, and it was just a lot of fun. And also just a cultural experience. But I wanna talk to you in this video. Um, this is gonna be a brief video and I'll have a big in-depth video a little bit later on. But this video is gonna tell you everything that you wanna know about Ghana in about five to seven minutes. And so we have, I'm gonna talk about accommodations, the food, the nightlife, the visa, um, some of the inside things, you know, when you wanna get your hair cut, ladies, if you wanna get the pedicure and manicures, you wanna get outfits made, all of that is coming up in this video. Welcome to Ghana. First things first, let me talk about accommodations. So the flyest place that I stayed in Ghana was Kuala's. Yo, this hotel is super fresh and the rooms are like the size of an Airbnb. So I was like, I like this, right? You got a fridge, you got a living room. Um, and depending, you can go from like the studio joint, which is like twice as big as a regular hotel room up to the three bedroom penthouse. Um, super fly spot. And then um, also second best place, I would say in my opinion, is Kempinski. And this is a super huge hotel, while Kuala's is more of a boutique hotel. But um, that place is also super fresh. And then another week, we spent a couple weeks in Ghana, we stayed um, in an Airbnb. So Airbnb has quite a few options and then pound for pound, that was probably the best value that I had for the money. We had like a three bedroom unit and that was like $175 a night in a super nice area called Ridge. So you can see the Airbnb here. And then there's all different options, right? You can probably find a decent spot. I'm not talking about December now. December, like, prices are, like, tripled. And I'll talk about December a little bit later on towards the end of this video. But I'm just talking about going any time of year. You could probably find a decent Airbnb for about 40 bucks a night, you know, and then they go all the way up to, you know, something like three, dollars $400 a night for, you know, crazier spots. So let's talk about transportation. So Uber is a plug out there, super easy to get around. You know, just have your phone ready and just like anywhere else in the world, you know, you order your Uber. My only gripe with Uber is they don't have any bigger cars. They're all pretty much small Toyota Corolla, you know, type of cars at the time of recording. So Uber, I hope you, you know, step that game up and have some more options available. Or you can get a private driver, right? So there's, um, you know, private drivers that you can drive you around for the day. And I wanna to talk to you about visas because this is actually a little bit different when traveling to other places. I was actually in the president's office and they said, you know, they're working on putting this online and making it an easier process. So shout out to Nadia. You know, we, we talked about, you know, the changes that they're making. But now, as far as now, what you need to do is you need to apply. And what I'm gonna do, like I said, I have an ultimate Ghana guide that you're gonna be able to access. So I said, the link's gonna be in the description of this video and you're gonna be able to know everything that you need to do, especially if you need a visa rush. You know, I'll have all that information. But you need a yellow fever shot. And you can't enter the country without having these two things, a visa. So if you're coming from the Western world, you know, you have a Western passport, this is something that you need. But if you have like a Nigerian or a Ghanaian passport, or you know, a West African passport, you don't need a visa, but you also still do need a yellow fever shot. And then on arrival, shout out to Ghana, one of the flyest, cleanest airports I've ever seen in my life. It is truly a world-class airport. And I can't even say I was expecting an airport that fly. So shout out to Ghana on the airport, an amazing job. And then talking about things to do, man, big up to my Waves crew. My trip would not be the same without them. They introduced me to everyone that I needed to know. And now I can go ahead and share with y'all everything that you need to do when you come to Ghana. And so I'm just so grateful. Shout out to my entire Waves crew. We had Opal, <laughs> Miss St. John, Pops, Yo, 
I appreciate y'all to the fullest. And so, things to do. If you wanna get fly, get, wanna get your hair done, there's a spot called Hair Rat. So they got women's salon downstairs, you can get your hair done. And then upstairs, you have a male spot where you can get, literally they've got like, uh, like all the drinks on top. So it's just like a fly gentleman spot. It's more of like your upper class place where people get their hair done. Also, I gotta send a shout to, um, I was just rolling around looking for a local spot. I went to like a local shop, you know, and his prices are super good. I think I paid like three, four dollars for a haircut. So depending on the vibe that you want, and local dude spot is in Osu, really good area. So, you know, don't fret on that. So ladies, when you come into Ghana, you might wanna get your petty, your matty, Polish is the spot to be. I was like, yo, I like to give my man my petty every now and then. And this place just makes you feel like royalty. You know, you sipping champagne, you know, the chairs, you feel like royalty sitting in these chairs. Service is off the chain, location is great. Shout out to Polish, man, they really took care of the boy. There's a reason I never hit my fitness goals. Cupcake Boutique, man. Um, they heard I was coming to town, so they invited us over. And when I got there, I was like, this is hospitality. They literally had cupcakes with our name on it. And I'd give them a shout out, even if they didn't have my name on a cupcake, because this place was just fly, fly, fly. And so, like, literally every celeb that comes into town, this is where they stop in to get their cookies, you know, some juice and some cupcakes, man. I'm telling you, you can just see by the visuals, this place is special. And ladies, if there's something I know about you, I don't want to judge, but the majority of you love to shop. And so when you're talking about the most luxurious shop in Ghana, all the celebs stop there, internationally local, Kua is that spot. And so they've got some of the flyest handbags. And so cause I had a couple girls hit me up like, oh my God, can you bring me back a bag from Kua? I saw, ooh, ooh, you know, wearing the bag. And so I stopped by the store and you know, the place was phenomenal. Now fellas, if you want to get fresh, if you want to get a traditional outfit made in Ghana, there's only two places that you want to go. There's my guy, Chocolate. Hey, yo, when celebrities come to town, it does not matter if it's a CEO of Twitter, you're talking about Idris Alba, Steve Harvey, you're talking about literally anyone. They come to town, they go see Chocolate. Literally, it's like, it's a sin if you don't. But now, his clothing are also like the Rolls Royce of clothing. And you know, his prices started about $450. But the way, he, like I got an outfit made, he came, he saw me and uh, measured me. And a lot of times he can do it without even measuring you. He is just like one of these geniuses when it comes to design. And then based on your personality, he'll whip you something up. I got mine, I was like, yo, <laughs> this is fly. I was getting compliments on my piece from everyone. So. Most people don't got a budget though, like his piece start at $4.50 a piece, but I say, yo, it's one of those things that you gotta get one of them. And all of his pieces that are made to are one of one. It's crazy. He literally has 100,000 different pieces of fabric in his place, 100,000. And so just pure genius when it comes to that. Now the second guy is my guy, Alex. So for me, I ain't got $500 a day budget to be rocking out throughout the whole trip. And so this is more like your five series Beamer, right? Or your E-Class Benz. It's like, it's a nice joint. You can't go wrong with it. And so this is like what Alex has. And then his joint start like 125 and literally he'll make you, you tell him what you want. You tell him the fabrics that you want. He'll come to your spot and measure you. Or if it's not him, you know, one of his people will come and measure you. And you and if you tell him like an exact look that you want, you know, he'll go ahead and make that. Or if you have like a custom joint, you know, he'll go ahead and make that happen. So shout out to Alex. You'll see all the fits that I got from him. I got a few different fits. And then, you know, this is pretty much what I was wearing. <laughs> Man, there's nothing regular about Ghana. So why fit in when you could be custom, baby? Now you can't come to Ghana without eating right. Now let me know in the comments, Ghana Jello or Naja Jello? <laughs> you know it's a Naja thing here now. Uh, <laughs> but yo, you can't come to Ghana without eating. And there was so many different options. And so I'm just gonna go through a few of them with you right now. Now there was one culinary experience that really stood out from the rest, and that was from Binta. So she literally travels all over the world um, sharing um, her local food. 
And so like one week she's in Germany, another week, you know, she could be in South Africa, she could be in America. And so if you're lucky to be in town when she's around, I highly recommend it. And my people over at Tastemakers help set up this whole experience. So shout out to my Tastemakers. Now I know in Ghana is one of the top places in the world when it comes to nightlife. So I want to just share a few of my favorite places with you. Somebody's falling, falling. So now if you want to get outside the hustle and bustle for a little bit, one of my favorite places about an hour and a half outside of Accra is in Ada, is Aqua Safari Line. This place is fly, fly, fly. They got the jet skis, they got the boats, they got a nice resort, and it's just pure relaxation vibes. And um, I was actually out there with my homies from the Toasted Life, so they were in town as well. So we just had the most amazing time, you know, sunset all around, drinks are flowing, and I can't tell you how amazing that spot is. And there's a little secret location as well. This cigar lounge that's about 15 minutes away, and you would think you're in the most exclusive elite speakeasy when you talk about the most elite whiskeys and cigars. And so this guy that grew up in England was like, I just want to create an oasis away from everyone. And like, I just could never imagine this place in Ghana. I was like, what is this place? And it's about 15 minutes um, away from there. So I'm not even going to say much, just look. Soon as she walking, walking, yeah. People them falling, falling, yeah. And then one of the coolest things that we did is just actually get to know the people. And so people always have a perception of how Africa is in general or how Ghana is. And so I just wanted to show you how I live when I go to Ghana or I go to these other places because there's always two sides to a story. And people always just want to show you, hey, a safari um, or we're just saving the kids. And that's not to say that there's not issues within Ghana, but that's not the only story, right? So a lot of times we're just hanging out, having dinner parties. Like we went over to my homegirl Ruby's house and it was just amazing. Like just beautiful vibes, beautiful people eating traditional Ghanaian dishes. She's trying to tell me that the Ghanaian jello was better, but okay. Um, <laughs> but I'm just telling you, there's so many different sides. And like one of the things I love doing is just educating people to show them. And most people are like, oh my God, when I was putting it on my Instagram, so it's like, yo, people are living like this out of Ghana. I was like, yo, yes. Then another thing, people don't know how diverse the art scene is. The art scene is crazy and well-respected around the world. And then so my brother, man, that I ran into in Ghana, I got introduced to him um, through Opal, uh, is one of the greatest artists in the world. We went to his place and actually uses recycled goods throughout Ghana. And when I say his work is respected, he's got a piece in the Vatican. Facebook bought literally like the weight, 600 pounds, that is in the office there on Hackaway in Silicon Valley. When we're in the Kempinski taking a picture, like he's got this huge piece behind him. Like the art scene out there is crazy and they have so many amazing artists, you know, within Ghana. You know, I was in Ghana for two weeks and so this is not all that I'm gonna share with you. And I have so many more in-depth stories, right? So I told you I got my sister, Miss St. John. And then, you know, Pops, you know, he did a whole basketball camp um, in Ghana for the kids. I think he was expecting like 150, then like 300 showed up. Um, you know, he was the second Ghanaian NBA player ever in the NBA. And then Opal, you know, co-founder of Black Lives Matters was out there. And we just had such an amazing time. And then my, my new brother that I met there, Mr. Mano, John, you know, got to go to his cousin's house, Richard. And then he was just sharing, you know, the vision of what so many people have for this new Ghana with, you know, new medical facilities, new, just so many things where so many people are moving back because they see the opportunity. And I saw it myself and just also, like the roots, the culture, where you're in a place and you're like, wow, I'm not even a minority here. I just feel like a normal person. And the energy, like, <laughs> my God, my God, my people, they are so calm and the spirits are so beautiful. The culture is so rich. And so in the full episode, you know, I'm gonna dive into, you know, these individual stories and, you know, what they have to share and what we did on the ground. 
And then also, we went outside of Accra um, to some of the most beautiful places in Ghana, and I'll be sharing those with you. So make sure that you subscribe. If you are not subscribed on the channel, make sure that you do that. But yeah, like I said, there is just so many amazing things to do, and I was just there for two weeks. But now I wanna end talking about December. Like I said, I've made the ultimate guide below if you wanna find out everything to do in detail about December and then any time you know, throughout the year. And then, like I said, I talked to so many different people. When you talk about Afrochella, you wanna know about Afrochella? I was actually with the founders. I went there, you know, I was talking to the big homies, Alvin and Kwame, and I went to like their studios, the BBN Z Studios. You know, Lauren Hill just pulls up there randomly. They've got a lot of the biggest artists, you know, in Ghana that record there. There's just so many amazing people that I connected with, you know, during my time there. Even <laughs> Mr. Chocolate, you know, you'll hear his story of how he started and now he's one of the biggest, you know, fashion icon. Literally sets a lot of the trends when it comes to, you know, African clothing in general. Sets a lot of the trend in the new wavy form. And so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end here. Any questions, you know, hit us, hit us in the comments. You know, we'll be sure to get them answered and make sure you check out that guide. And another thing, the year of the return. People wanna know about this, right? People are like, oh my God, who's coming? I hear this person's coming. But then also people just wanna be connected to their roots. They wanna know where they, you know, where they come from. And so one big thing um, that I found out, there's several different DNA tests that you can take, right? And they actually have African ancestry. And so I put a link below to that. The double NACP was out there while, um, you know, she was, and I know a few people that know the founder of African Ancestry. So I was like, let me see if I can find, if I can get you guys a special discount for that. I don't know at the time of recording, but hopefully, you know, I can reach out to her and get y'all um, a discount for that. Cause that one will actually break it down by like what tribe, you know, you are from. And you know, goes really deep with that. But um, all in all, I gotta send a big shout out to my homies, Nate, and Yuri, they helped film this entire project. And um, it was just such a cool experience, you know, filming something on the motherland. We got so much more stuff coming for Ghana. I'm so excited. And major shout out to Isaiah on the keys, composing, you know, this amazing music here. And then just shout out literally to Ghana. Um, and I want to send an amazing shout out you know, to even the president's office and really standing behind tourism and getting behind everything and even giving us an opportunity, you know, to come into the office and talk about, you know, some of the things that we've seen and that we feel can be made better. And like I said, I just want to thank everybody there on ground. I really feel that Ghana is going to become one of the top places to visit in the world because of the amazing people within the countries, <laughs> within, the, within the country. But anyways, I'm out of here. Take care.